Welcome back, Picton's Northern Star, the boat, the float, or whatever floats your boat I suppose. Hey, uh, horrible day, bit of wind, quite cold, Let the sun's out, it, uh, it's not really very inspiring sort of weather. I'm just down checking the boat, you see not a lot of people out fishing at the moment, no one out there, no hardy souls. So I thought I'd better come down, check the mooring lines, check for chafing, checked that the buffers were all in place, nothing untoward, bizarre, strange, or whatever was happening. Everything looks pretty good here. Uh, no sign of any chafing or problems. Buffers are okay. Probably need to replace those with some flat ones, might be better. They came with a boat, so they're probably getting a bit old, but past a use-by date. I've got a little bit of consumer guilt going on. I'll talk you through that. I've discovered Timu, uh, but I'll elaborate a bit further on in the episode. Uh, the wet vax that I bought uh, has sucked the Coomera. Uh, I'm going to return that to the shop, but I'll also talk about that a bit later on. But everything looks good here. Uh, let's get underway. A uh, bit of an update, um, hopefully in a week or so they'll start work on the boat again. I got in touch with seafarers and they are sort of getting to the stage of getting ready. Um, Sam from seafarers who uh, has done a lot of work on commercial vessels has pretty much, uh, as he said, he wants to pull the um, shaft out of the reduction box slash gearbox himself. Uh, apparently it's a little bit tricky and given that they're as rare as hen's teeth these days he doesn't want anything to go wrong so uh, obviously uh, that's really awesome to hear and just wants to make sure that things go right and hey I appreciate that and I'm quite happy to wait until he's got a few moments to do that uh, he's got some access to some good advice as well with people local people that uh, know their gardeners inside and out so it is quite reassuring uh, it's quite a nasty uh, northerly possibly floating in there it's cold I thought there was nobody actually out there fishing but I can see the tip of a fishing rod over there so someone must be hunkered down behind the um, wall there out of the wind fishing this is why somebody is keen enough to be out there. Uh, been buying a bit of stuff off Timu. Um, the last episode, sorry, I'm just sort of walking around the bloody great hole in the floor. I have a fall down there, I'm probably going to do myself an injury, so I'm pretty keen uh, not to do that. Um, last episode, I picked, picked up one of these for sale about $13 thereabouts so I thought I'd bring that down it's pretty much identical to what's already there I don't know what size that one here but this is a 100 watt 100 watt one possibly that is also a 100 watt as well but I thought what I might do is uh, set up another solar panel and set it up for the uh, another set of batteries in there maybe the starter as opposed to have one for the house one for the starter so anyway so I thought I'd bring that down so I'll throw that over there um, I decided I was going to buy a 24 volt bilge pump now this one here is uh, off Timu 24 volt 1100 gallon per hour Pretty much identical I believe to one I bought locally here from a marine shop $40 it has the uh, internal flow 
and I think one I bought very identical to this, I'll go down and have a look shortly and bring it up, and we can have a look. Uh, cost me at 114. Right, the other one here, <laughs> pretty much identical. Have a look at that. This is a C Flow one. Black. This is a 750 gallon per hour as opposed to 1100 gallon per hour. Um, looks pretty darn identical to me. There, yeah, there's both of them opened up. There's the new one there. There's the old one. That all that float system, etc. Looks pretty identical to me. It's all come out of the same factory. It's just a different size. So $40, uh, $114. Now I'm not uh, advocating different brands or makes or models. Uh, it's simply just an observation. So that there, that there. So yeah, right. As you can see, pretty much identical. Right, the other thing I picked up was some of these. Now I put, purchased some for a little bit of wiring work the other day. Uh, and they were pretty much, I think, this size and this size. For half a dozen or eight, I think, there was something like 6 to $12. Just off the top of here, I'm, I'm by memory. Uh, these ones here were some... 800 or 900 part sets for about $13. Uh, so lots of uh, these connectors here, the solder connectors and the shrink wrap. I got two lots of them. They didn't quite send me uh, what I wanted. I wanted one of those and one that was slightly different, but they've sent me two the same, but I'm not going to muck around and deal with it. So pretty much... Uh, some big savings here, exactly the same as what you buy in the shops, you know, broken down into little packets. Now the uh, funny thing is, is I feel a little bit guilty about it because I'm always one for supporting our local businesses uh, and our local shops and shopping locally and all that sort of thing. But the reality is, is that, you know, for the same price as all of that, I would have only bought probably 10 or 12 of those identical soldered joint wire connectors in a shop. You know, $40 versus $114. Um, yeah, $16 or whatever I paid for it uh, versus probably 40 odd plus in the local shop. Now, I mean, there's no way that local businesses can compete with that. And while I feel a bit guilty about doing that and, and buying off Timu and that sort of thing, the reality is, is that if I don't do it, I'm not going to be able to get some of this work done. At least at a reasonable price. Um, you know, I'm not going to get a personal thank you for shopping locally. Um, the ability there is to buy online. I'm having a little bit of a look. Obviously some things I think I would still buy locally because you, you need to be able to take stuff back or swap stuff out or get advice on what you're buying but some of this sort of stuff is pretty much par for the course you get what you get and it's exactly the same as what you buy in a shop or what you're buying online so who knows but just the other thing is so uh, we had to look at some of these oil mats the other day nearly six dollars each you know absolutely ridiculous you know i can buy a hundred of them for a hundred and thirty odd dollars Maybe dollar thirty-seven to a dollar fifty each. Exactly the does exact. They do exactly the same job. So why am I going to go and buy single oil mats at nearly seven bucks a pop from a shop when I can buy them online? And the only difference is I've got a little bit of a wait for them to arrive. But I can maybe buy them at a hundred at a time or thirty at a time. Bring them out to the boat. Leave them in the boat. They're always here. And as they uh, get used and need to be replaced, I replace them. And Throw them out, dispose of them accordingly. 
you know, I don't have to go back and then spend another $7 each for these oil mats. It's absolutely ridiculous. I couldn't believe how much they were charging for those little tiny oil mats. You know, that quite conveniently been put down there to people for wipe their feet on. So anyway, um, this here is a job I, I want to do and have a look at. I'm not a fan of these plastic electrical uh, block connectors. I, I really hate them. I, I don't think they're good at all. So that's one of the reasons why I've picked up these. Um, I'm going to work my way through and tidy up that wiring in anticipation of hopefully getting the boat mobile again once the work's done and tidying up potential uh, wiring issues or uh, fire risk through shorts and that sort of thing. So, here we are, and just sort of run through that there, just see what you all think of that. Stick it in the comments below, probably uh, you won't agree with me not buying locally and buying online. Hey, you're entitled to have an opinion or a view, the reality is that, uh, you know, when you're in a boat, bust out another thousand, everything costs money, paying through the nose for every single little thing that you buy simply because it's from a marine place or a marine shop or a local shop. Well, I'm sorry, I'm uh, going to be unashamedly looking for savings where I can. And if it's quality and it's exactly the same as I'm buying locally and I can get it online with a little bit of a wait, so be it. I will uh, go down that pathway every time, as would everybody else, I would imagine, in the same position. Right, let's go for a walk. Is this where Paddy used to take you out fishing? Yeah. Got some uh, historical Māori sites along the way as well. It's quite cold. Toilets. What? Toilets. Yeah. Oh, the smell of salt water. It's a smell I remember from uh, my childhood. I used to uh, crawl across the rocks and everything in Wellington. Kumara pits or something. Little sap here. Yeah. Hey. No. Little sap here. Yeah.
cool, eh? Yeah. It's good that they dug all the sail from the hills. Yeah. They were probably a lot deeper too at one stage. Probably. Yeah. And that's how we can the fishing. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, this is pretty, pretty neat, isn't it? When we get down, can I take some photos? Yeah. Oh, crikey, you can feel it when you come in up here. I was never a great fan of the wind effect. I absolutely bloody hated it. Now it reminds me of my wife. And when she was very unwell and we spent a lot of time in hospital, very hot, very stuffy, every opportunity we got, she wanted to be outside and quite often it was windy. She loved the wind in her face, it made her feel alive, and now whenever I feel the wind in my face, I love it, reminds me of my wife, and I'm truly thankful for the time we spent together and these memories. Just a disclaimer, I'm not an historian, I know very little about Māori history, and particularly Māori history in this area. Uh, this is simply what I've learnt through a wee bit of research and walking around reading some of the signs on this wee uh, uh, jaunt down to Karaka Point. Right, just popped down to the boat today, uh, open up, a little bit of air in, there's some heavy rain overnight, I'm just going to whip in and just uh, suck the bilge out, uh, there's a wee bit of water in the bilge, uh, I want to get on the next day or so and do a couple of wee jobs, there's not much, very little but still if I keep keeping it clean and getting it sorted, it should be uh, quite good. Hopefully uh, 
little uh, work. Not sort of too hopeful, but uh, we'll see what, see what happens. Right, while I'm down and the wire and everything I bought last time, I'm going to uh, connect up to the wires. Uh, so when I install it on the bilge, I'm not going to be lying on my belly down there trying to hook up the electrical wires. So what we'll try and do is I'll uh, do all of that up here. So all I've got to do is then install it in the bilge and then run the new wires up. Uh, as it's uh, previously said, it's a 24 volt pump so then I'll find out the best uh, location in there to run off the 24 volt system uh, we'll have to go and get some bilge pump hose it's going to be a bit bigger than what's currently in there to fit that uh, certainly designed to move a fair bit of water so Right, over the time lapse, got some of that. Oh, that was exactly very exciting to watch, but the earth, good fitting. They seem to work quite well, these things. And the two power for the manual and the automatic. I'm going to have to get a slightly bigger pieces of uh, uh, shrink tubing. I'd like to run it down over the top of all of that just to really seal it up. So anyway, so I've got about six meters of uh, six meters of cable there. Uh, the pump is working. I've just touched it to the batteries, and yep, it's going to work. So anyway, so the other consideration I was going to have was that uh, just to have it directly powered solely off the twenty-four volt. Uh, pretty much to uh, ensure that it was always on with no switch needed uh, no ability to have it accidentally turned off and yeah and the other thing is I've bought the other switch here which we covered off in a previous one manual automatic and, and off uh, I think I will actually use that because it would be quite good just to have a manual just be able to check to see if it's working when I come into the boat flick it on if I can hear the pump I know that everything's tickety-boo so the next uh, thing will be where to put it and I could put it where there was previously a rather crappy switch there but it's down a little bit low and if you're going to have grandbabies aboard, they like to fiddle with everything and play, turn stuff on and off and flick switches and things. Also, there's too much of an opportunity for things to be 
accidentally knocked on there or off should it be it's really being knocked off is the main problem now previously I had uh, probably spoken about putting a bit of a switchboard up in here in this cavity doing away with these books and everything in this rather unique shelf and uh, putting up a, uh, a piece of timber up over that or, or ply uh, get it look nice, it leaves a little bit of an air cavity in there to be able to run wires and have switches and such like there I can run wires up in behind here uh, certainly make it a, a lot tidier so potentially I could mount the switch possibly up in here although it's not got a great deal of room there as you can see so it would need to probably jut out a little bit so that's one consideration so maybe just frame it up and put two panels up there or one panel uh, bring it out a little bit more to create more of a cavity in behind it uh, be able to run the, any wiring up down up and behind it there that I want to run uh, potentially look at maybe moving some of these switches here up into there as well or putting some new switches in get everything out of the way running to some new wires and know that everything's sorted out uh, stuff can't be knocked on or off so that's one consideration anyway you know, it's a bit of a mess the uh, wiring uh, quite no what all that's about and behind there I think that's the wiring for the uh, macerator for the toilet in the head and uh, yeah there's got to be a better way of doing it and I'm, I'm starting to lean towards maybe some battens uh, down onto the top here to, to protrude it, jut it out a little bit more and just get everything out of the way have main feed wires down here into the battery from the batteries well, particularly with the house battery I'm not worried about the starter battery that's only for the engine but for the house battery or batteries house bank running the lights and everything it would be quite good to be able to uh, get all of that uh, sorted out and uh, squared away so anyway a little bit of a fizz boat coming up in here bad for a no wake zone mind you the boat hardly felt it so in the comments below just uh, stick in what you think whether I should create a, a tidy uh, switchboard area up in there batten it out a little bit run the wiring for all the auxiliary stuff lights nav lights etc up into there replace it with a new uh, switch bank get rid of that thing there I think it's probably had the best of its days uh, and get everything up out of the way so that we can actually start rewiring some of the stuff and by rewiring I mean just the auxiliary stuff and I think that that's probably what needs to happen some new wiring, new feeds, new switches and then when I get round to rewiring up into the cabin here and insulating the roof and all that drama I can actually get the new wiring run for that as well along with new lights Nice little boat. I don't quite uh, know what he's up to. So he's just having a bit of a bit of a play around. 